here. And welcome to the series finale of Life Support. The only lifestyle show that has all the advice and scams to help style the life you lead. We know you need all the help you can get. It's just wonderful to have your company. I'm Sigourney, and tonight I'll be showing all you modern women how to design your way to a better sex life. I'm Life Support's handyman, Todd, and I've got some top tips to teach you tonight, including some safer safety to secure your suburban home, and some more tip-top tucker. I'm Penny, and I've got all the answers you won't find in the encyclopedia, or any other book. And tonight, I'll be letting you in on how to get your banking done without getting done by fees. I look forward to that. I'm Dr. Rudy, and I'll be introducing you to the very latest device to help organise your life. And a little later on, I'll be showing you a great way to deal with a prevalent public problem. Well, it looks like we've got a lot of information to download into your living room. It certainly does. So for the last time, for a little while... Let's get to it. People complain a lot about the way banks invade our privacy. But there is a way to turn it to your advantage. And all you need is an ATM card and a scabby looking mate. The video camera inside this ATM watches my every move. It sees me insert my card and enter my personal identification number. Be careful not to touch the money. Your friend has to take it direct from the machine. <laughs> the most important thing to remember is make sure you use an ATM from your own bank. One brand of bank won't pay up if you robbed at the other bank's ATM. Ladies, we all know that a dinner party can be a delicious cocktail of anecdotes, flirting and joie de vivre. But occasionally, there will be that one boring guest who brings the whole evening down by continually talking about their kids, property prices and politics. So tonight, I'm going to show you a surefire way to ensure that your dinner party conversation is suitably entertaining for all your guests. Just invite some close friends who have recently broken up, or better still, just gotten a divorce. But make sure that you don't tell either of them that the other one's coming. Hello, single girl. Hello. Mwah, mwah. Come in. It's also a good idea to invite one of them an hour earlier than the other to ensure they get a few drinks in. Oh, God. What the hell is she doing here? Oh, great. This is going to be fun. It certainly is. And if either person has started seeing someone new, don't forget to invite them, as they're crucial to the evening's entertainment. Oh, and who's this? Excuse me, but who the hell are you? Choose your music carefully. Then, just sit back and enjoy the entertainment. Can't believe Sigourney even invited you to this dinner and you cheap little dress. Oh, yeah, you would know it's a cheap dress. It's the only thing you bought me in the four years we were together. For four years I had to put up with this whingy oh, shit. Well, I'm sure another four hours won't kill you. Oh, don't be so childish. I'm Can being you childish. childish. You're the is? one who left without even leaving a note. Essential facts. Oh, yes, and the mysterious an email. facts. I don't yeah, want there to was nothing. It. Before dessert is served, your guests will be treated to a real-life operatic drama with a bitchy Melrose place feel, and you'll be the hottest hostess in town. Bon appétit. But you were too drunk to remember anyone in our wedding. <laughs> Dr. Rudy here. In this busy age, we all need help organising our lives. So we turn to diaries, filofaxes, laptops. But the problem is, as personal organisers get smaller and smaller, they can be cute, but unreliable. But not if you have the right one, like this one. This is my personal organiser, Bernadette. Everywhere I go, my personal organiser is with me. It holds all the information I need, reminds me of my business appointments and personal arrangements. And it's so sophisticated, you can talk to it. And it actually talks back. Don't forget you've got a haircut at four o'clock. Thank you, Bernadette. 
great, isn't it? And it's reliable. It's only crashed a couple of times, and I've only had to reboot it once. Come along, Dr. Rudy. We really have to go now. Yes, yes, all right. After your haircut, you've got a meeting at 5 o'clock and then an early dinner appointment. This is Dr. Rudy helping you to get the most out of the little things in life. Bye now. My word, Dr. Rudy. What a wonderful way to keep track of your day. So cute. So tell me, does it really work that well? Absolutely, Sigourney. Of course, being so small, they can be easy to lose, but you really should consider getting one. So, Dr. Rudy, what have you got planned for our time away from the television? Well, Sigourney, I must say, I certainly am going to miss you. Oh, Dr. Rudy, you're such a sweetie. I'm going to miss you too. I uh, know. As for our break, I suppose that after checking in with my junior resident, I really should be checking on my vineyard in Rhodesia. Oh, it must be lovely there. Oh, if you're heavily armed, it can be a beautiful part of the world. So what about yourself, Sigourney? What does our little brack hold for you? Well, I certainly plan on continuing to give advice to modern women all over Australia through my regular magazine columns. And then there's the regular get-togethers and dinner parties. So many people to catch up with. Well, we've all been run off our feet the whole time, haven't we? Helping average Australians is a big undertaking. It certainly is. And we haven't finished yet. Oh, g'day. In this day and age, more and more people are installing these. And sometimes this simple prison design is all that will keep the criminal element out. Sturdy, secure and safe. Or is it? What if you're at home and there's a fire? Smoke fills the room, the door is blocked by flames and the only way out is through the window. You're trapped and you're gone. So, if you install bars in your home, you may want to pay your dentist a visit and make sure he has fully up-to-date records. But you know, there is a way to feel safe in your home and escape a fire. Why not make your own security bars for your home? All you need is some shredded newspaper, some plain white flour, some water and some paint. Paper mache is dead easy to make. It's cheap as chips and it sets rock solid. Just mix a good portion of it together and then mould it into the shape of some bars for your windows. And just wait for them to set. Then just give them a lick of some of this metallic paint. And there you have it. A criminal won't try and hit on this house now. Looks like too much hard work. And if a fire does break out, it's only paper and glue. The fire will burn them away while you can get away. So take a safer safety tip from Todd. Don't let your security grill become a char grill. Oh, Willie Bendela, she's a crazy woman. Crazy. <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? An evening out with friends, fine wine, good conversation, and an extremely pleasant ambiance. Then some canonal cop goes and spoils it all by deciding that everyone would like to hear him sing. A good way to combat such overt displays of self-indulgence is to fight fire with fire. Just drop your strats and start practicing a bit of candid masturbation of your own. A drastic measure to be sure, but definitely effective. Such a display may not only get the message across to all those boring wankers in your midst, it could also be used as a public demonstration against the more common forms of professional onanism. I said, mate, if you're paying peanuts, you're gonna get monkeys. You got the message.
Its minimalism belies the work's complexity, wouldn't you say? Yes, it's, it's certainly an original exposition of two-dimensional space. There you have it. Not only pleasurable, healthy and potentially communal, but also a positive act of ridicule and criticism against all those wankers we have to deal with on a daily basis. And as the old saying goes, if it feels good, do it. Bye now. It's a beautiful world, so we should be nice to each other. And if somebody's going to become a wanker, he can be a wanker on his own. See, this guy is like my brother here. I can call him wanker or anything because we're close to each other, you know? But to other people, we don't, we don't want to know, you know? Oh, man, I've met heaps of them around here. Well, literally wankers? Yeah. <laughs> no way! Meet them all the time! <laughs> It's a problem far too many modern women face. After you've been with the same man a couple of years, or even a couple of times, you start to experience the same moves and the same sex. And there's nothing more tedious than a lazy lover. So tonight, I've got a wonderful idea for you modern women that's sure to put some marvellous moves back into your man and a smile back on your face. To start, you're going to need a set of plain white bed linen. Then you just need some inspiration. Take the time to get it right so he can. Once you've planned the moves you'd like to do, just take some fabric paint and fill in the silhouettes that show you both where various hands, feet and knees should be. Just make sure you remember to paint your positions in pink and his in blue. Then you have to number these moves and link them together with arrows so he knows what direction to go in. Then you can let him know how you'd like to make love by simply making the bed. Gentle and caring like this restrained style for that men that cry sexual experience. Or, if you're feeling adventurous and acrobatic, why not design something a little more challenging? And the addition of a wall hanging will increase your satisfaction and, of course, compliment the decor. So there you have it. Just remember, for a full, enjoyable sex life, it's important to let your lover know exactly what you need. With a set of lazy lover linen, every woman can be really responsible for her own orgasm. Wow, Sigourney, I have never seen you take charge and be so in control. Oh, Penny. As a modern woman, my advice has always been about putting women in control. Not like that, though. That was so empowering to women. Heterosexual ones, anyway. Well, I think everything I do on life support is empowering to women. I must have missed something over the last ten weeks, but it is kind of making sense. Well, it's never too late to learn, as our female audience have discovered. Anyway, I've got to say, for me, the past few weeks have been great. And from all the letters we've received, I can really see that you've totally gotten my POV. That's right. You certainly seem to be shaping the youth of the nation. Someone has to. Well, I just hope that your good work doesn't wear off while we're away. That's right. So remember, people, keep scamming the man. Because even though we won't be in here, he's still out there. Excellent advice, Penny. And here's some more excellent advice now. In recent years, a lot of Australians have discovered the rich tradition of bush tucker cooking. As far as this continent's natural produce goes, our indigenous forebears have passed on the knowledge of what's hot and what's not. In fact, we are the only nation on earth that actually eats its own coat of arms. But some folk take a dim view of this. There are all sorts of rules and regulations to stop the mass mastication of native fauna. But uh, accidents do happen. And if you take a tip from Todd, you'll be there to reap the rewards. The modifications I've made to my bull bar are pretty simple. I've extended it so it's lower to the ground and I've incorporated a wire net that slopes back at an angle so that all of the post impact tucker stays put till you stop. Now once you've bagged your meat, the cooking's up to you. 
I mean, I prefer to dig a hole, build a fire, and wrap my game in some paper bark for that traditional hungy style meal. But if you really want to impress, take the flesh home and dazzle your loved ones with variations such as fairy penguin frittata, bilby a l'orange, echidna eclairs, or my personal favourite, roasted wombat. Now that's advanced Australian fare. some tea for you, Bobber Tea. Would you like some milk with that, Bobber Tea? How's it? Dr Rudy here again with more timely advice for prudent parents concerning a dangerous condition which can affect children as young as two. Do you like a biscuit with that, Bobber Tea? Imaginary friends. They are the silent partner in a child's life. And if they aren't dealt with at an early age, they can inflict untold damage to that child's future. You see, this can be a very sad genetic blueprint. Basically, Lukia will grow up to be a wano. You see, wanos like Tertia are simply unclean, fetid adults that still have imaginary friends. And unfortunately, in most cases, that friendship has soured. And now all they do is fight. Yeah. And the reason for their falling out is very simple. You see, Ted's imaginary friend has made more from his laugh. He has a good job and lives in an enviable house. Is married to a beautiful woman and drives a nice car. And obviously, Ted resents this, especially considering it was his imaginary friend who first suggested they go to the pub for a couple of beers. So, how do you protect your child from the influence of their imaginary friend? All you have to do is go out and buy a child-sized coffin. This one looks about bobbity size. So the thing to do in the morning is place the coffin on the floor of your child's bedroom. Then when they wake up, simply break the news that their imaginary friend has died during the night. He died. Your child will be so devastated by this news, they will never want to take the chance and dream up a friend again. So protect your child's future today. Kill off that imaginary friend tonight. Bana. Well, Penny, this is the last show for a little while. What are you doing over the break? I can't say. Why not? Because it could be taken down, used as evidence. Oh, really? Yeah, and judges are much stricter if they know what you did was premeditated. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going up to Surfers Paradise for school this week. Top beaches, great weather, plenty of young people. Should be all right. Good luck. Yeah, I'm doing some volunteer security work. I figure these kids have worked so hard in Year 12, they deserve to feel safe whilst letting their hair down. Safe? Real safe. What do you mean by that? Nothing. I just think we should move on to the next segment. What a great idea. I understand. I'm scared. What do you want? Get away! Get away! Grab his work, come on! Are you tired of being hassled by stereotypes every time you go out after dark? Well, don't worry, because life support has the answer. Simply avoid being targeted by dressing like one of the gang. This way you know the only person mugging you when you withdraw money is the bank. Very nice, very nice. So be the baddest mofo in your hood and enjoy the feeling of not being victimised. Oh, <laughs> Every week, I get hundreds of letters all asking me the same question. Sigourney, how should I invest my money? Yes, this is one of the great dilemmas of being a modern woman. Of course, back in the good old days, women didn't earn any money, so they never had to worry about these silly problems. But now, it really is very important that a modern woman invest her money wisely so that she can reap the maximum return. First of all, 
a lady needs to understand the lingo. Basically, there are two things you can put your money into. Assets and liabilities. An asset will bring you a return on your investment, whereas a liability will incur further costs for you to meet. So let's have a look at some assets and liabilities. This frock is a liability. It costs $220. That's the initial purchase price. But wearing this dress will incur further costs. It'll cost you the interest of men, it'll cost you your dignity, and if you have any, it will cost you your self-respect. Now, this frock is an asset. It costs $350. Well, that purchase price is significantly more, but once you make that initial outlay, this asset will reap significant returns, both in terms of short-term dividends in the form of one-night stands and long-term growth in the form of a committed relationship, maybe even marriage. And who can put a price on marriage? And there you have it. Everything a modern woman needs to know about investing money without having to read those boring financial papers. And there's just one more thing to remember. You must diversify your portfolio. I'll take the lot. Well, here we are again. I know. I can't believe it. Yes, it is our melancholy duty to inform you that here we are at the end of another episode. Yes, the end of our tenth and final episode. As good a reason as any to make a croak on bush. Excuse me? It's a croak on bush. It's a cake made from custard-filled profiteroles and toffee. I tell you what, I'm going to miss your cooking, Sigourney. And I'm going to miss cooking for you, Todd. I'm going to miss reading the letters from you out there. So many problems. And I'm going to miss all the free stuff people have given me just because I'm on the telly. Yes, it's been a wonderful ten weeks. And all of us here at Life Support hope that all of your lives have been improved in some way by us. That's right. I hope Todd's tips have set you on the straight and narrow. It's been a pleasure. And I hope my point of view has improved your view on how to scam the man and made your life just that little bit easier. And I know that my medical advice and financial wisdom has made many Australian families finally healthy and happy. Oh, I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> so to stay true to that promise, we better say goodbye. But don't worry, Australia. We will return in the not-too-distant future. And until we do, be good to one another. And remember, we'll be back for you. Good, good night, night, Australia. Australia. Oh.